age, you've got to have victory in your person, in your personal life. What you've got to do is you've got to be willing to clean up your home and life. Mm. Clean up your home and life. The most logical place to start is your personal life and in your home. If you are who God says you are, if you are a victim, victorious believer in Jesus Christ, then the obvious place to begin is at home. Amen? So let's just pick up the narrative right there and see what Gideon had to do. Judges chapter 6. We're going to read a few verses of Scripture. It says, Now it came to pass the same night. What? The very same night that the Lord said, You're a mighty man of valor. The Lord said to him, Take your father's young bull the second bowl of seven years old, and tear down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the wooden image that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this rock in the proper arrangement, and take the second bowl and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the image which you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten men from among his servants. I've always thought that was humorous, right? Hold on a minute. Gideon's like, oh, I'm the least in this family. Wait, he's got ten servants? Hello? My uncle had a way of describing that. He called it poor mouthing. He poor mouthed. Oh, I don't got nothing. I ain't nothing. He had something, didn't he? He had ten servants. Hello? So Gideon took ten men from among his servants and did as the Lord had said to him, but because he feared his father's household and the men of the city too much to do it by day, he did it by night. Wow. The first thing we have to understand is why, why did he have to do this? Why? It's because the people had left God and they had begun to worship these false gods. Gideon's own family had done this. His own father, is the men of his own town. Probably Gideon himself had been involved in Baal worship. Everybody he knew had been involved in that. But if you are who God says you are, then you've got to begin to act like the person that God says you are. Come on. And so, so Gideon takes ten of his servants and we can criticize him for knocking it over by night but I just say wow that's pretty awesome right and can you imagine the men of the city getting up early in the morning and guess what their altars all torn up their Asherah pole their bells are all being messed up they're all gone hello I'm sure glad I don't have to wake up in the morning, go outside, and see if my God's still standing up hello how many of you know your God is always sitting on the throne Amen. So they come out, and uh, how many of you think they were happy? Not at all. They were upset. They preferred for Gideon to stay small. They preferred the hiding Gideon to the man of God, Gideon. They didn't like the man, mighty man of valor, Gideon. And, and, and they were not happy when they saw change. You know why? Because mighty men of valor sometimes upset the apple cart. I wonder, is there anyone here that's really interested in living in victory? Amen? Is that you? Amen. And then you've got to start living out of your new identity. And I'm going to tell you that sometimes the people in your family aren't going to be too happy about it. Hello? The people in your neighborhood, the people on your job, the people you used to run with, they're not going to be happy, especially if you become a real man or woman of God and start changing things up, hello, and start saying, no, I ain't going to drink that anymore. No, I'm not going to do that anymore. No, we're not. And then we, come on, I just believe that there's some people in this house that have already said a long time ago, I don't need to run to the places where I used to run. That That's not who I am now. I'm a new creation now. Amen. I pour all that other stuff down. And today I'm living for Jesus. Hello. And so you need to take for a moment this morning and ask yourself this question. What is it that's hindering your life? I'm sure you probably don't have an altar to Baal set up in your house somewhere. If you do, let us know. We'll come help you tear it down. Come on, somebody. Hello. But let me tell you, it was... 
there may be something else. What is it that's hindering you? And if you, if the first thing that pops into your mind, whatever it would be, listen, I dare you, I double dare you with cherries and peach preserves on top. I dare you to tear that thing down and say, God, I'm going to live for you. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I dare you to take your household Start singing in it, praising God in it, worshiping the Lord in it, walking around, talking in your prayer language in it. Amen. Amen. Start changing the atmosphere that is there. Amen. When I was a, a missionary down in Columbia, we would we did a lot of street evangelism, holding open air crusades and we would invite people to come to Christ and people would come down to the front and say that sinner's prayer and we'd pray with them and almost immediately our pastor Alejandro Erisa would come up and he would begin to disciple them and the first time I ever heard him do it I was scratching my head I was like what is it that you're saying and I mean these people had just repented of their sins they've just come to Jesus and the first thing he would say he would say like this, hermanos, necesito que, que se vayas a la, a, a la tienda y compren algo de, de fabuloso. Some of you know what I'm talking about. He said, I need you to go down to the store and I need you to get some fabuloso, some cleaning stuff. And he said, tomorrow morning, not the day after tomorrow, tomorrow morning you're going to start cleaning your house. And I was thinking, what's he talking about? These people just accepted Jesus and he's telling them to wash their floors, clean their house. You know what he was saying? He was saying, listen, Christians are clean. Christians live different than those in the world. I'm just here today to tell you that if we are the exact same in our households as our neighbors are, if we live the same way, listen to the same music they listen to, watch the same movies that they do, and deal with the issues the same way, then what's the difference between us? us and them. I just declare that there's a better kind of a life. Hello. There's a life where we look and we say, you know something? I've got Jesus and he's all I need. I've got the Lord and that's all I need. You say, well, pastor, I need a job. Let me tell you something. You go to the Lord. Get down on your knees and say, Lord, please, I need you to open up a door for me. Come on, somebody. I'm just there to tell you that he's everything that we need. We don't need anything but him. Mm. Victory becomes comes when we accept our identity and when we clean up the where we live. And then thirdly, wait a minute. Thirdly, we get victory in the mission. Oh man, I could preach for two hours on this, but I'm not gonna do it. Everybody, everybody relax. Breathe deep. Say, okay. I've only got about two paragraphs on this, and then we're gonna end. Victory in the mission. You see, sometimes what we want is victory in the mission, but we don't want to accept, first of all, who we are in Christ. We don't want to straighten stuff out in our life. Uh, our houses are filled with the same anger, same curse words, same... We think, well, I just want to be victorious in the mission. How I many you know God has a mission for every one of us? God has a mission you say, well, what is it, Pastor? Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hello. He said, therefore, he says to go and, and, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Come on. We are to be disciple makers. We are to, that's the mission. But you can't have victory in the mission until you have victory in the others. And so we've got to believe our identity as a victor. Victory. Would you stand with me today? Thank you so much.